four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary. Entertainment. entertainment, and sports. sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion now. Here is Steve Malsberg. All right, folks, uh, welcome back, and uh, we're going to be joined uh, in, in just a moment uh, by our guest, uh, um, who I, I mentioned earlier, Jason Riley, who has a great new book out uh, talking about uh, why liberals make it harder for blacks to succeed. But there, there's a story out there, um, and it's written by Cheryl Atkinson, who we had on the show just the other day. We'll get more in-depth in this uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, we hope to have Cheryl back. Uh, the Obamacare exchanges, you know, we haven't heard numbers in months probably remember they they reached their goal we had big fanfare and of course those numbers many believe were misleading well she says there are fewer than four million newly insured people fewer than four million newly insured and the government by now had hoped for 26 million newly insured but we're going to go to jason riley right now and uh, before we do let's all take a look at this you're repeating a talking point from our colleagues on the other side that we're obsessed with the White House. It was Jay Carney who perpetuated the myth that it was two rogue agents in Ohio. It wasn't any of us. Was that accurate? Was that first initial line of defense that this is just two rogue agents in Ohio? Was that accurate, Commissioner? Uh, not that I know of. All right, so that wasn't accurate, and that came from the White House. Who said there's not a smidgen of corruption? Who said that, Commissioner? Uh, my understanding is that was the president. Uh, it was the president. So that's Jay Carney and the president both inserting themselves into the IRS scandal. And you want to blame us for, for bringing the White House into it? I haven't blamed you at all. You just I did, Commissioner. All right, the great Trey Gowdy, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, as promised, we're now joined by Jason Riley. Jason Riley, an editorial board member at the Wall Street Journal and the author of a great new book, Please Stop Helping Us, How Liberals uh, Make It Harder for Blacks to Succeed. And Jason, welcome. A pleasure and an honor to have you here, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, before we get to the book, and I want to spend uh, the overwhelming majority of time on the book, um, your reaction to what we've been seeing here uh, from the uh, IRS commissioner. I think it's a problem that's only going to grow for the White House because they're clearly not telling the truth. Computer experts don't buy what they're saying about the missing emails. And common sense suggests that the timing of this is just highly suspicious, that the emails of these particular officials go missing at this particular time, just as Congress is looking into it. I think it just raises all kinds of red flags. I've been really shocked at how, uh, what looking at the reaction from people like Dave Camp and Paul Ryan, who aren't exactly, you know, part of the firebrand wing right. of the Mild GOP. Mattered, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have Dave Camp calling for a special prosecutor here, and Paul Ryan losing his school. Tells you something. Yeah, it really does. All right, well, we'll see where this all leads us, and we'll have more on this as the show goes on. But I, I want to talk about this uh, this book, and uh, I, I guess, I guess the, the first question, based on the title, that most people would want to ask you is, how do liberals uh, make it harder for blacks to succeed? Well, by having an inflated uh, sense of what the government can do to help blacks. Um, I mean, one of my overarching themes in this book is that uh, poor blacks need a man in the home much more than they need a black man in the White House. And what I mean by that is that blacks ultimately must help themselves. Uh, they must develop the types of habits and characteristics and attitudes that previous groups had to develop in order to rise in society. And to the extent that a government program, however well-intentioned, interferes with that self-development, it does more harm than good. When the president, who is the first black president, um, stands up and, and, and if not making excuses, maybe that's the wrong uh, terminology, but certainly uh, gives reasons for, and I'm paraphrasing because it was, it was his, sp his speech on race that he gave, I think it was after Trayvon Martin's verdict or right before it, where he talked about, you know, how he was, uh, uh, people looked at him funny in an elevator, people looked at him funny when he was crossing the street, coming towards their car, they locked the doors. Uh, but also he talked about the black community, where he said there are problems, there is high crime, but you know, there are reasons for that, and basically, you know, it went all the way back to, to slavery. Yeah, slavery and Jim Crow are yeah. used as all-purpose explanations for all that ails 
black Americans. And when a black, when the black yeah. first black president says that, doesn't yeah. it give yeah. cover? It does. It does, and it's a shame because he is saying to the black community, "You remain victims, just like you were 150 years ago, just like you were under Jim Crow. Nothing has really changed." And it's a cop out. It's a dodge. Um, if you look at the data, if you look at the statistics, the black family, for instance, was in much better shape coming out of slavery than it is after 50 years of great society programs. Uh, black labor participation rates were higher. Uh, in the 1930s and 40s, even into the 1950s, before uh, you know, we passed these minimum wage laws and 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 other efforts to help uh, increase black professions and or blacks in the professions and so forth. Affirmative prior to affirmative action programs and all of these things. When you look at the history of helping blacks uh, that the left in general has perpetrated, these policies have tended to do more harm than good. And I think, uh, as the the title of the book says, uh, what we need is for the government to get out of the way, to stop doing the things that harm, that get in the way of the cultural development that needs to take place in order for blacks to rise in society. Perhaps nobody is harmed as much, and there are plenty of white kids harmed by what I'm going to bring up here, but, but perhaps nobody, percentage-wise, is, is harmed as much as, as the black community by the teachers' unions, the traditional school, the opposition to charter schools, the opposi opposition to vouchers, and here again, and I don't know why Mitt Romney chose not to bring this up, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know no one will ever bring it up but me, apparently, but uh, and some others. Uh, one of the first things Barack Obama did when he became president was he halted the voucher program in D.C. Yeah. So the brothers and sisters of some of the poorest black kids in the worst one of the worst school districts in the country could no longer follow in their siblings' footsteps and say, I'm going to be able to go to some of the best schools because of the voucher system. He stopped it. Right. He stifled that opportunity yeah. for black kids, and yeah. nobody talked talks about that, but beyond that, the, the, the marriage from the, with the Democrats and the liberals to the teachers' unions has stifled education in this country. And again, I, I believe, and I don't know the statistics off the top of my head, but uh, that blacks have been disproportionately affected. Oh, of course they have. And it also illustrates the disconnect between black elites like President Obama and the black rank and file, who overwhelmingly support vouchers and charters and school choice in all its forms and have for decades. Barack Obama has never found a public school good enough for his own children, either before he became president or since he's become president. Ted Kennedy, another champion of public education, never found a public school good enough for his own children. Again, yet these folks want to deny the same choices that they had for their kids or that are, they are currently exercising for their kids in the, in the case of the president, deny that to less fortunate blacks, to under, un, underprivileged blacks. And it is a shame. Um, and it, it, you're right. It, it is a case of, of the black left siding with the teachers' unions, with the adults who run public education over the interests of the children. And there's no other way to justify uh, what they're doing. I mean, you cannot justify teacher tenure laws that give a teacher a job for life after a couple years in the classroom and make her almost impossible to fire on education grounds. There's no educational justification for last in, first out, where uh, teachers need to be fired based on seniority, not on whether they're good teachers. There's just no educational justification for those policies. And, you know, uh, th th that's why I, I urge everyone to get the book and read it, because, uh, the, the, you know, a 10-minute interview does not do justice. We should spend an hour on education. We should spend an hour on what we started out with. We should spend an hour on what I'm going to bring up now. And uh, by reading the book, you can, you can do justice to this very important topic. And uh, l let me ask you, you address in the book uh, uh, black leadership and, 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 you know, and the question of uh, if Martin Luther King Jr. were alive today. Uh, you know, I, I maintain that JFK would not be welcome. You know, they always say Ronald Reagan wouldn't be welcome in this Republican Party. I don't believe that, but I do believe that JFK and his ideas would not be welcome in this Democratic Party because it's it's totally different on every level. Um, what do you think uh, the black leadership that struggled for civil rights would think of, you know, a Jesse Jackson calling uh, um, uh, Trayvon Martin Emmett Till? I mean, my God, I, I'm white and I'm so offended. What, what does that do to the memory of a black boy taken from his, his bed and, and, and murdered in the most horrific way and dumped in the river to call Trayvon Martin Emmett Till? So well, what, what would they think of today's so-called leadership? Well, Martin Luther King uh, was someone who thought blacks needed to succeed in American society, notwithstanding racism. Uh, Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton take the view that blacks cannot be expected 
to succeed until racism has been vanquished from America. And what Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton are really about today is justifying their existence. Um, so they, they sort of scour the land looking for Confederate flag sightings or someone somewhere using the N-word, some white person that is using the N-word, and, and point to it and say, look, nothing's changed, nothing's changed. You still need us to march. You still need us to do what we've been doing for decades to line our own pockets. But they're not really helping the interest of the black poor. Perfect example of this when it comes to black unemployment, which we is only have 30 double, seconds, uh, double the yeah. white rate uh, for 50 years, double the the white rate. Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton side with the unions who want to block Walmart from building stores and in, in right. low income communities that would provide lots of jobs. They'd rather those folks stay unemployed that work at Walmart. That is not in the interest of the black poor. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jason, uh, thank you so much. Such an important uh, work. Uh, Jason uh, Riley uh, from the Wall Street Journal, please stop helping us how uh, liberals make it harder for blacks to succeed. I'd love to have you back and continue the conversation, and thank you very much. Thank you. All right, folks, uh, we're coming back. And uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to be joined by uh, Dan Hampton, a retired uh, colonel, talk about Iraq and more right here on the Steve Malsberg Show.